In this video, we're going to take a look at how to write an, the equation of a line that passes through two given points. Now, obviously, you could make a graph yourself, graph the two points, and then use a ruler to uh, see where on the y-axis the line goes through to find the y-intercept, and, and then find the slope using a, some sort of rise-run calculation. But there are some limitations to that, and so we're going to take a look at how to find the slope and y-intercept of a line that passes through two points when you do not have the uh, option of making a graph. So you'll remember that slope is often referred to as m when we talk about y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Well, the slope can also be referred to as the ratio of rise over run. And when I say ratio, you think fraction. Now, rise over run. When we talk about rise, we're really talking about y values, right? So we know that the slope is going to be equal to something to do with, with uh, what happens with the y values. And Luckily, there's a really handy equation that's useful. Um, we know that the rise is going to be equal to y2 minus y1. Well, what does y2 and y1 mean? Well, right now we have two points, point 1 and let's call that point 2. Incidentally, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't matter which two points or which one you call 1 and which one you call 2 as long as you're consistent the whole time in doing the problem. So again, I'm going to call this point 1, and I'm going to call this point 2. Well, this is the x value in point 1, so it's going to be referred to as x1. Well, if this is x1, then this has to be y1, and that's where our y1 comes from. If this is point 2, this is our x2 value, and here's our y2 value, because this is the second point. This is the y value of the second point, y2. So, when we talk about run, run can also be expressed as the difference between the two x values. So run is equal to x squared minus, sorry, not x squared, x2 minus x1. I'm using subscripts, not exponents. <coughs> so, what is our y2 value? Our y2 value is 4. So we know that slope is equal to 4 minus our y1 value, which is 2, all over our x2 value, that's going to be 4, minus our x1 value, in this case it's 1. So then let's find our slope. 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3. So we know that the line that passes through these two points has a slope of 2 thirds. And now it turns into one of these problems, doesn't it? Because we know the slope, and we have not one, but two points that it passes through. So at that point, we're going to look at our slope-intercept form equation, and let's plug in what we know. We know we still have the y, and we know that's going to be equal to the slope. Well, the slope is 2 thirds. The slope is still being multiplied by x. And we're going to add to it our b value, our y-intercept. At this point, we have three variables. Or, well, we have three unknowns, sorry. We have y, we have x, and we have b. Wouldn't it be nice if we could only have one unknown? It would really truly be great if we had an x value and a corresponding y value. And wouldn't you believe we actually do? We have two of them, and we can choose either one, it does not matter. So I'm going to pick this first coordinate, 1, 2, because the numbers are a little bit smaller. I would have picked, uh, if I had an x value in either of these points that was divisible by 3, I probably would have picked that just to keep the numbers uh, as integers instead of fractions. But it doesn't matter what you pick. So in this point, what is my y value? Well, my y value is 2. So I have 2 is equal to 2 thirds times the x value from this point, 1, 
plus b. 2 thirds times 1 is 2 thirds. So we have 2 is equal to 2 thirds plus b. Well, we need to get the b by itself. What's the opposite of positive 2 thirds? Well, negative 2 thirds. So 2 minus 2 thirds is simply, sorry, 1 and 1 third. And that's going to be equal to our b value. Well, 1 and 1 third, um, I, I want to keep it a, as an improper fraction. So really, this is equal to 4 thirds because 1 times 3 is. No, oh, thank you. But what, what is 1 times 3? Yeah, 1 times 3. 1 times 3? 1 times 3. three. Yeah, 1 times 3 is 3. Plus 1 is? Okay, so, so 1 and 1 third is equal to 4 thirds. And that's our B value. We're not done yet. We need to put everything together. I'll see you Monday. So we have Y is equal to our slope, 2 thirds, times X plus our B value, which is 4 thirds. Let's do it one more time, and I'm going to do it a little bit quicker this time. Uh, I would suggest that you try to do this problem here. Stop the, stop the video, do the problem, see if you get the same answer I get. That would probably be the most beneficial thing for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let's get started. We know that slope is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well. We have our x1, our y1, x2, y2. And so our y2 value is 2. So we have 2 minus our y1 value, which is 8. Our x2 value is 1 minus our uh, x2, sorry, our x2 value is 1. Our x1 value is negative 2. So 2 minus 8 is negative 6. 1 minus negative 2 is 3. Well, what is negative 6 divided by 3? Well, that's just negative 2. So we have a slope, an m value, of negative 2, which means we have y is equal to negative 2 times x plus b. Let's pick a point. I'm going to pick the smaller, the, the point that has the smaller numbers. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Uh, y is going to be 2 in this point. So we have 2 is equal to negative 2 times my x value, which is 1, plus b. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus b. What's the opposite of negative 2? Positive 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4, is equal to b. So our equation, let's put it together. We have y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. 